Hi guys, thanks for watching. I miss seeing all of your faces at school and I'm sad that we can't have our usual music class, but I am thankful for technology and that we can continue to learn and create music and hopefully have some fun. So each week I'm gonna come on here and um, do a video for your weekly uh, music class and assignment. Um, and then there will be links in your Google Classroom for all the documents that you need or that I'm talking about that you can either follow along on your computer or print out ahead of time. Um, this first lesson is going to be about the musical historical eras and you're going to do a composer quest study. Um, but before I get into that, I am also going to upload some documents on Google Classroom or ask Ms. Allison to um, just for some extra practice. If you feel like you could use some extra help with a rhythm, there are two rhythm worksheets on here um, to help hone those skills for you with the notes and the rests and how many beats of either music or silence they get. And then there are some note naming worksheets that are primarily for the treble clef notes that we've talked about. Staff has five. Each one of those lines has a letter name note counting from the bottom up, and each one of the spaces um, has a letter name. And then finally, there's a fun kind of brain teaser that I know not everyone will be able to do, but it's name that tune. So you have to name the note names. <clears throat> and then if you have access to an instrument, uh, play them, or you can go online to a free online piano app or website and play the different notes and see if you can figure out the name of the famous tune. So those are some extras if you would like to hone your music skills a little bit more. Um, but today's lesson is all about um, the classical musical eras that we divide um, kind of music history and composers into. And so we start off um, 1150 to 1400 is the first time period. And I gave you in Google Classroom, um, this worksheet here that has all the eras and all the dates. And if you just want to scribble on some tidbits of information about each one so that you can go back and remember, that would be great because from this, you're going to be choosing your composer to study. So we are starting at the medieval times, 1150 to 1400. So during this time period, most of the music was for the church and consisted of what we call Gregorian chant or when the monks and sometimes nuns would sing for church. Um, we call it monophonic, which is one melody, not a whole bunch of instruments. It was one voice singing one melodic line. Um, and they had different forms of notation back then. Just a fun fact, um, they would sing by shapes or by different colors even, um, or they'd just sing by hand signs at this time. We didn't have one unifying way to notate music. Um, here is an example of some Gregorian chant, and I know you all will recognize it right away. So one melodic line. Towards the end of the medieval time period, um, we get into a little bit of polyphonic uh, vocal lines, which is one melody and then different voices singing harmony. Moving on, we go to the Renaissance period, and that's from about 1400 to 1600. And we know through history that the Renaissance time was just a time of enlightenment for all subject areas, and music was no exception. Um, we start incorporating some instruments into um, the music. Um, a lot of like stringed instruments were invented then that are precursors to like the guitar. Um, some horns and woodwind instruments were also invented during this time. So we have not only the voice, but we also have 
um, some instruments, and then we have a lot of vocal harmony going on, lots of different lines. So this is an excerpt um, composed by Orlando Gibbons. Um, and I forgot to say that um, we don't have a lot of composers from the medieval time frame, um, just because, like I said, things weren't written down. But one of the most famous from the medieval times was Hildegard von Bingham, and she was a nun, and she is one of the only composers and the most famous from the medieval time. So back to Renaissance. Um, this is an excerpt from a piece composed by Orlando Gibbons. So as you can hear, a lot of different voices going on, a lot of different melody lines and harmonies. We didn't hear any of the instruments, but they were just in the inception um, period. Then we're gonna move on to the Baroque time period. And the Baroque is famous for um, composers like Bach and Handel. Um, they started using the idea of the modern orchestra. So a lot of instruments happening. Um, the harpsichord, which is the precursor to the piano, was a very famous and well-used instrument of that time. Um, if you hear a Baroque piece of music, you think more classical. Um, it has a very specific formulation called counterpoint. Um, where different notes are woven together and a lot of movement um, within the pieces. Um, let's see here. This is uh, a very famous example of one of Handel's works called Water Music. And you, I'm trying to pick examples that most of you guys would recognize and hopefully you will this one too. So pretty much a full orchestra there, lots of movement within the music. Um, and from the Baroque time period, we get into um, more of the classical time period. And this is from 1750 to 1820. And this is when um, a lot of composers take what the Baroque composers did and add even more ornamentation to it. So it's even more flourishing and fast and lots and lots of notes. Um, one of the most famous composers of this time was Mozart. We all know about Mozart. And also the piano, or when it was first created, it was called the pianoforte because you could play it both quietly, piano, and loudly, forte. And we just shortened it down to the piano for now. Um, Haydn, Beethoven started in the classical time period. Um, Franz, Schubert, Liszt, um, and then uh, Mozart is another famous uh, composer from the classical era. And this is uh, Mozart's Turkish March that I hope you guys will recognize as well. Okay, and from the classical time period, we move into the Romantic, and the Romantic starts in 1820 and goes until about 1900. Um, specific attributes of the Romantic period are lots of dynamic contrast, lots of lush melodies. If you hear a Romantic piece of music from this time period, you're gonna recognize it as just like smacks you in the face with all the drama. Um, Beethoven crosses over between classical and romantic, so he's kind of unique in that way. Um, some other composers of this era, um, Richard Wagner, Mendelssohn, Chopin, um, Schumann, Brahms, uh, Tchaikovsky, that wrote um, the Nutcracker music. Um, 
Then we also have a lot of great opera composers that composed um, orchestral scores for operas too. Buccini, Strauss, Mahler, um, Rachmaninoff. These are just some examples of composers from the Romantic era. Uh, here is uh, a Chopin piano piece as an example. And then we move into 20th century to 21st century or current day um, music. And, you know, all these dates are, are relative. Uh, it's approximately about the same time. And we can kind of divide modern music into several subcategories. Um, and I'm just going to tell you those impressionistic that went along with the impressionistic art movement of Monet. The music reflects that lots and lots of little notes that kind of create a large scale piece. Um, expressionist music, modern music, postmodern, and contemporary. And the last one contemporary being 1945 until today. So when you're choosing your composer, I want you to do it pre-1945. So we're not doing any current composers. We're doing pre-1945, pre-contemporary um, music. And why we try to break this musical era into subcategories is just because there's so much. There pretty much are no rules at this point. Remember when I said in Baroque music, there was this really strict formula of creating music called counterpoint? That completely goes out the window for rhythms, for melodies, for form. Most of it is just you can adhere to it or not adhere to it. <laughs> So it can be atonal, where it doesn't make any sense. Um, there is a piece of music that is just silence. And so the piece of the music is the background noises itself. Um, this is an example of um, a Debussy piece, who was an Impressionist uh, composer. Remember I said it went along with Monet um, in the art movement. And this is one of his most famous pieces called Eau Claire de la Lune. So these are all the music historical eras that we group our music in. So I want you to go back through your notes and choose a time period that interests you from medieval Gregorian chant all the way up to um, our modern day music pre-1945. And then from there, I want you to research a composer and you're going to go on a composer quest. Um, I have given you this sheet as kind of a guideline in Google Classroom. It's just um, a framework for you to research your composer and find out all the important details about them. Their full name, when they were born, their music background, any unique facts that helped influence uh, their writing music. Um, were they successful when they were alive or were they were successful after they passed away? Um, what genre did they uh, mainly compose for? Was it piano solos or orchestral or opera? Um, just all the information you can find. These are just 14 um, questions to help frame it. And I've also given you a list of resources that I have checked out that have great biographical information on the composers. Um, and so when you're done with your composer quest and have all the information, um, if you could either, I guess you could type it up and email it to me, um, that would be great. Um, my email is the school email, amy at chesapeakemontessori.com. And then this would be due before the next assignment, um, which this one will cover 
this week and next week, and then we'll have another one. Um, I did want to say as far as harmonicas, we're not putting them on hold, but it's challenging to do a group lesson with harmonicas. So continue to play um, your songs that we have learned, continue to work on your solo piece. And if you have any questions or would like a one-on-one -on -one, um, either video conference or FaceTime session, we can definitely do that. Um, just go ahead again and email me and we'll set up a time to do that. Um, email me if you have any questions at all. I'm excited to find out which composers you chose and why and what you learned about them. So thanks so much, guys, and I look forward to uh, chatting with you next week.